know, sometimes you've just had enough with life. You need to come home and play some games to forget that reality does indeed exist and it sucks. Killing virtual people or creatures is usually a great way to do that, but occasionally all those headshots and explosions are just too much. And you need something a bit more serene. At least I do. For some people it takes a game like Solitaire. Something simple, infinite, and addictive and is quite nice to relax to. But for me, I usually end up going for a game of Mahjong. Now the real thing is pretty awesome, but it takes a lot of setup and that's annoying when I'm not in the mood, like right now. For example, when I'm just up for some DOS gaming, which is nearly all the time, I go straight for some Shanghai 2 Dragon's Eye. It's a game by Activision from 1990, and it was created for DOS as well as several other platforms like the Macintosh, Sega Genesis, and Super Nintendo. In case you're not familiar with Mahjong, the game is Chinese and involves removing tiles by matching them with other tiles. It can be played alone or with others, often for stakes. It's actually kind of similar to the European game of Solitaire in some respects, and actually got started around the same time, in the 19th century for the most part. However, the game really took off when it was first imported to America by Abercrombie and Fitch in the 1920s. Yes, the same teen-oriented, overtly sexual, overpriced favorite of douchebags and preps today. Hard to believe that the same people that produced this also made this way back when America was still awesome, but I digress. Dragon's Eye starts you off with a stereotypical Asian tune and a traditional solitaire mahjong layout with traditional white tiles. In case you're not familiar with the concept of mahjong, it's incredibly simple. The goal is to remove all of the tiles by way of matching available tiles. Any tile with a left or right side open or nothing covering it on top is fair game, but everything else must be uncovered in order to be paired off and removed. But not all of these will be removable depending on how you play, although the goal is to get rid of everything. If you don't pay attention, you'll screw yourself over. As you play and match things, you might get an animation and a sound, depending on the tiles that you've just removed. And you know, I'd say this is about the only way a game of Mahjong can really be enhanced. Little effects to please the senses. I mean, I guess you could go all ADHD Michael Bay and fill it with explosions and Megan Fox, but really, why would you? It's Mahjong on freaking DOS, and you're not going to get much more without getting too gimmicky. And that's fine, because I play this game to relax, not to be bombarded by bright, flashy programming concoctions. Now, as far as the game of Mahjong itself goes, Dragon's Eye is an exceptional computer game. I've played quite a few, and this one has one of the more easily discernible traditional tile sets that I've played. This is especially noticeable in VGA graphics mode, which uses the high res 64480 graphics that so many games tried to take advantage of back then. In fact, I've tried it in all graphics modes, and along the way I have found no one mode which seems to be significantly better or worse in this regard, and that's actually quite an accomplishment. Anytime during gameplay, you can get hints, shuffle the tiles, replay the board, and save and load a game at any time. Believe it or not, several Mahjong games actually don't have these features. There's even a built-in how to play and tile guide in the game in case you've lost your manual. I highly recommend not losing your manual because it is made of pure sex and awesome. With plenty of information about Dragon's Eye, the game of Mahjong, and even the friggin' history of each individual tile. <laughs> it looks like the game was actually programmed by a guy named Rice. Uh, I have no idea why that's funny, it's really not. So you have Mahjong in a Mahjong game, that's not too surprising, but the subtitle of the game is Dragon's Eye. Dragon's Eye is kind of a variation on the multiplayer version of Mahjong. One person plays as the Dragon Master and the other as the Dragon Slayer, with the Master placing tiles and the Slayer removing them, eventually trying to build up the Dragon's body over the entire board, etc, etc. There's a bunch of weird little rules in there. I'm not a huge fan of this, but perhaps it's because I've had nobody but the computer to play me, and it owns me every chance it gets. There's also a challenge and tournament mode, which is based on the Dragon's Eye game. But if these don't interest you, there are also 12 other tile layouts for the regular Mahjong game, based on the various creatures that you typically see with other Mahjong games, like the ox, the rat, and the snake. There's also a collection of eight more tile sets to play with, each with a unique theme. 
Things like animals, letters, flags, and playing cards. Each set only changes the looks of the tiles and the sounds they make, not the gameplay itself. Each sound is supposed to match up with the tile being removed, like the coyote, or the fish, but sometimes it just makes no sense, like the rooster. Ah, uh, Activision, I've never heard any chicken that sounds that much like a crow, I'm sorry. Anyways, these are minor additions, but it does spice things up a bit if you want it. If you're still friggin' bored of the game, there's even a construction mode, which lets you make anything you can out of Mahjong tiles. It seemed like every game had a construction mode back then. These were awesome, I really miss this crap, and if you do too, well, here you go. I wholeheartedly approve of Shanghai 2 Dragon's Eye, especially for DOS. Sure, there are far more advanced Mahjong games for Windows and such, but Dragon's Eye is great to have for all varieties of classic DOS PCs from Tandy and EGA on up to VGA spec 486 machines. If you're in the mood for some Mahjong and don't want to set a whole board up and don't like those shiny new user interfaces and pesky high quality sounds and music, but just want some good old PC gameplay, Shanghai 2 is where it's at.